What is going on, everybody? James Hancock here. Want to talk a little bit about a show that everybody should be watching, The Terror on AMC. In the time that I've been running this YouTube channel, easily one of the best parts of the experience has been all the incredible recommendations I get from people who leave comments. And while The Terror was not at all on my radar in the days leading up to its release, it most certainly is on my radar now. We are five episodes deep of a 10-episode season, and it's pretty obvious at this point it's going to be by far one of the best shows of the year. The show is based on the 2007 novel of the same name by Dan Simmons and author that I've been meaning to read basically my entire life, but because I'm illiterate and watch too much film and television, I have not read any of his books. But if the rest of his books are anything like The Terror, I definitely need to take a crack at some of his material. This is the kind of story that's going to have massive appeal to anyone who's interested in military history, scientific history, epic tales of high adventure and survival, but most importantly, a little dash of supernatural horror. The horror does not overwhelm the show, but it's definitely a key ingredient. But what's cool is how it uses a real-life historic event as a jumping off point. In 1845, the two most technologically advanced ships of their age, the Terror and the Erebus, sailed off to find the Northwest Passage through the North Pole, and they were never heard from again. That's where the official history ends and our story begins. But from the word go, I just loved everything about this show. The cast is incredible. Even like the opening title sequence is eerie and moody and sets the perfect tone. It's almost like they took the cast and crew of Master and Commander and allowed it to step sideways partially into the world of H.P. Lovecraft. My only criticism is that the show has this ridiculous release strategy where it's released on Amazon in every single territory in the world except for Canada, the UK, and the US. They're doing that for obvious reasons in order to drive traffic to AMC, but what's annoying as hell is that a lot of people around the world are getting access to the episodes before the principal audience for the show. But apart from my intense annoyance about how they've chosen to release this show, I'm fascinated with pretty much every aspect of this show. I think that a lot of times in horror stories, the supernatural elements kind of eclipse or overwhelm some of the more mundane threats characters might face, but because this show features two ships trapped in ice for several years, being ripped apart by a supernatural creature is almost kind of last on your list of worries. There's frostbite and there's scurvy, an acute lack of rations, as well as rations that are going rotten because of some new experimental technique with cans that has turned out to totally backfire at the worst possible time for people who are trapped up in the desolate north. It feels like a show that's really done its homework when it comes to period detail of what it was like to be in the military back in the 1840s. And what I like most of all is that they find a way to make ordinary horrific events feel almost supernatural. In the very first episode, there's this great sequence where there's this guy trying to chip ice out of the propeller of one of the main ships before they get frozen and stuck. While he's down there on the water in this old-fashioned scuba suit, he turns around and sees the dead body of somebody who drowned earlier just kind of floating ominously toward him. Absolutely eerie as hell. But to my knowledge, has nothing to do with the supernatural threat that they face once they get stuck for a while. But you can't say enough about the guts and the resourcefulness and just the intelligence of most of the crew. This is a scientific expedition, so it's not like a bunch of teenagers in a high school stumbling into the woods and getting eviscerated. These are people who are capable of overcoming insurmountable odds and have done so many times in the past. But what's great is seeing the clash of wills and the clash of egos between the different crews from the two ships. And the power dynamics at play between all these characters definitely continue to shift and evolve as starvation and frostbite or just plain murder starts to overcome a lot of the crew members. If I were to try to find a horror parallel that most closely approximates the style and tone of this, it would be the chapter in Bram Stoker's Dracula dealing with the Demeter. As it sails to London with Dracula down in the hold and they don't realize it's the vampire on on the ship and it slowly starts taking people out but you basically read about the crew's experiences in a series of journal entries as sickness and madness and disease and murder overcomes them all it might be the best chapter in that great novel so if you're a fan of that kind of horror fiction the terror is definitely going to be right up your alley but if you're a fan of nautical adventure novels like those by pat o'brien there's going to be a ton of stuff in here you like as well in episode four there's a horrific sequence where a couple of crew members are being disciplined and one decides to run his mouth off a little bit and they decide to punish him as a boy not as a man ordinarily if you're going to be lashed they lash you across the back but because he's being punished as a boy they lash him across the ass 30 times and you basically see his buttocks completely ripped to smithereens. So even when they're not being ripped apart by this supernatural creature, there are plenty of gruesome homegrown threats for these guys to deal with as well. Now I have to confess, when I was considering whether or not to start following the show, I looked up the Wikipedia entry, so I'm vaguely aware of the overall story and where it's going, but I, but I will not offer any spoilers. But with the most recent episode that we have in the US, episode 5, we basically have the ships, they've been trapped for two years, and the structural integrity of the terror is very much in doubt. The character Francis Crozet, played by Jared Harris has completely 
completely given himself over to a severe case of alcoholism, even by their standards. I mean, everyone in the crew, they're given a lot of grog every night, but he's basically wasted all the time. So much so that he's having some of his crew members go over to the Airbus and steal some of the whiskey, which does not sit well with their new captain, Captain James Fitzjames, played by Tobias Menzies. The weather has become particularly brutal. It hovers between negative 15 and negative 45, basically creating a scenario where the crew can't stand exposed to the elements for more than 30 minutes at a time. And the big question is whether or not Lady Silence, the only member of the indigenous population they've encountered, whether or not she'll be able to provide any information that might help them figure out their best chances of surviving the scenario in which they find themselves. The surgeon good sir has been working on a dictionary with her, but there are a couple crew members who have been in this area in the past who are able to communicate with her. But a lot of the crew members are getting disturbed by having her on board, and they move her from the Airbus over to the Terror for another interrogation. And at this point, just the discipline of the crew is starting to fall to pieces because you see people getting toes amputated. It's so cold that like your teeth can explode in your mouth if they're exposed to the elements. You see even little things that people are touching metal is ripping the skin right off their hands. And the doctor and the surgeon of the two ships have gotten together and realized that some strange disease is afflicting the crew that's like scurvy, but it's not scurvy, but it's causing this horrible, nasty gum disease. My suspicion is that it's coming from the rotten food, that the rotten food has basically been contaminated either by exposure to the elements or to the metal, but it's just one of many problems besetting the crew. And you can tell some of the crew members are just starting to come undone. As they store a lot of the dead bodies down in the hold of one of the ships, one of the crew members thinks that the dead people are talking to him. There's just a lot of fear and paranoia in the air. But the main confrontation of this episode is between Jared Harris and Lady Silence, and he basically threatens to throw her off the ship unless she becomes more forthcoming about ways to fight this creature called Tunbak, as she describes it. But she very flatly tells him, you very clearly are in the mood to die, so why should I help you with anything? And before he has a chance to really extract any more information from her, Fitzjames comes aboard, has this massive confrontation with Crozier for all the booze he's been stealing from the other ship, they come to blows, all hell breaks loose. But the drama only intensifies when Tumbak attacks in the middle of the night. Although middle of the night is kind of a strange way to say it because it's perpetually night at this point in the year. But we get this incredible battle sequence as Blankley is being pursued by the creature. And we're seeing the creature's legs and we're seeing little hints of its face and claws. But he's climbing up in the rigging trying to stay away from it. The creature is basically like a polar bear but with a very human intelligence. And it's pursuing him up through the rigging and it's hacking at his leg. And it ends with this pretty epic moment as he hurls a lantern onto it lighting it on fire. Just as they find a way to get one of the cannons in place down below and they blast the creature and it hauls ass off into the darkness at precisely the same time lady silence chooses that moment to escape from the ship as well and while i don't suspect she's in any way shape or form in an alliance with the creature she very clearly recognizes that these men are coming apart at the seams and it's not a good place to be but as if that were not enough we get another sequence of blankly where they have to amputate his hurt leg it's been exposed to the elements it's bleeding profusely and they start plying him with booze but he also insists that everybody around him join him for a glass of whiskey or at least a shot of whiskey because he jokes, he almost feels like he bonded with the creature, so he feels like he just got married. Of course, after they drink, they hold him down, and they immediately go to work with the saw. It is absolutely gruesome stuff. In any case, the episode draws to a close with Jared Harris's character, bringing everybody around him, saying that he's basically going to be unwell for a week, perhaps more, because he's decided he's going to go cold turkey and give up the booze, and that not until he appears on deck in full uniform is anybody to offer him any assistance of any kind. So for a show that's at the halfway point, of its first and only season. I have to say I'm absolutely riveted. I'm fascinated by this show. It's a shame there's only one novel because I'd love to see more adventures like this. But who knows, maybe it'll prompt AMC to adapt more books by author Dan Simmons. At a bare minimum, I need to actually read some of his books. So if you've been on the fence about checking out this show, remain on the fence no longer. Definitely give it a go. If you live anywhere in the world apart from the US, Canada, and the UK, you're in luck because I think the entire season is already available to you. But from what little I know from the synopsis that I read about a week ago, I know there's some very dark chapters ahead for the characters of this show. Thanks again to all of you out there who recommended The Terror. You were absolutely 100% correct. I could easily see myself looking back on the show at the end of the year as one of the two or three best shows of the year. And I just can't wait for next Monday to see what happens next. In any case, hope you enjoyed my recap and review. You can always hunt me down on Twitter if you want to talk more. My Twitter handle is at Colbrax, or you can just leave a comment in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, please consider giving my channel a subscribe. I would intensely appreciate it. And I'll be back at y'all tomorrow evening to talk about the next episode of Legion. So long.